scale, like far away or up close. And, but in the Genesis sequence that we worked on, we needed all scales. We had to be down on the surface traveling very fast, and we had to be far away looking at it as a sphere. Uh, you have to um, uh, think about the transition between these two scales, or these many scales too, because sometimes programs work well at one scale and not at another. And we have uh, we have spent as much time worrying about the transitions as we did about the programs that worked at the individual scales. So they had to be smooth and seamless. As well as these general problems, the task also called for a number of detailed techniques. So we asked Lauren to take us through these in sequence. OK, the, um, the first view that one sees of the planet is a cratered moon. And that was done by Tom Duff, who is now at Bell Laboratories. And he um, constructed a, a map of where the craters were by randomly dropping mud into a, into a rectangle and seeing how it splashed. Basically, his, that's essentially what he did on the computer. And given this description of where the craters were, so, somewhat distorted because of the fact that it was a sphere, uh, then he wrapped this onto a sphere and made perspective views of the sphere from different directions. And so we had a cratered sphere. And it was done very carefully to allow for the shading and so forth as the way the light bounces off of a, of a lumpy surface. Uh, that worked fine up until about 5,000 miles or so. And um, then what happened was that this, the texture map got to be very big, and so the, the, uh, the samples of the altitudes got to be far apart, and so you could start seeing the graininess of it. And so uh, down closer, then we went to fractals and where you can see the relief in, in valleys and lakes and so on. And then farther away again, we went to a painting, which uh, had color in it and clouds and oceans and so forth. What about the fire? The fire, yes. I can't forget the fire. Uh, the fire is a, was a technique that was added on top of the, the bumps or the, the craters. Uh, it's done in a compositing method, with a, by a compositing method, where we compute the fire element and mat it over the, the cratered planet. And this matting technique, which we've uh, developed to a high degree around here, we use in all of our productions and, and so forth. But it, so it allows one program to worry about one kind of thing and another program to worry about another kind of thing, and you put them together with a very simple compositing method. The fire was done by Bill Reeves, and it it was really intended as, um, from my perspective anyway, as, as modeling volcanoes where hot projectiles are flung out on a parabolic arc influenced by gravity and they cool as they travel. And so they change color and, and direction. And these were all happening in their own reference frame as the camera was moving by. And so it, uh, all this geometry of three dimensions and motion and, and stuff uh, gives it a very real sense. One of the tricks or the problems with the fire was making it dense enough because every one of these little particles only covered a small piece of the screen. And so if you wanted to have a wall of fire or a region of fire, it took hundreds of thousands of these things. Uh, today, with the graphic standards that we have, we make much higher resolution pictures than we did back then. And <clears throat> in fact, the pictures that we made back then appear small to us today with big fuzzy pixels. It's, it's a funny perspective. but. Um, even then, it took hundreds of thousands. Today, it would take millions. Capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Fascinating. The With images like this, here, it may come as a surprise to find out that there are still many areas to be developed in the quest for realism. For instance, environmental... In 1981, 82, uh, we'd computed it on general purpose machines deck boxes and, and the sort of general purpose machines that you find around graphics labs these days. And it was taking a while for each frame, you know, like 40 minutes to an hour sometimes. And that's okay for video resolution production, but we were in the movie business. We wanted films that, that had richness of detail that was, that was as good as live action. And so this means millions of pixels, not just hundreds of thousands. And it means compute times of 10 and 20 times greater because we wanted a more model complexity as well as greater resolution. 